Thanks for staying with us, everyone. Let's talk about Liberal Party and the Edo governorship election. I'm joined by a two-time member of the House of Representatives and a governorship aspirant of the party in Edo, Honorable Sergio Zago. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. So you have, raised, um, you have addressed why you left the PDP uh, last year on different occasions, uh, but, but this was the party that sponsored your two terms at the House of Representatives. How easy... Oh, what's that decision for you? Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but uh, as you remember, I quickly endorsed uh, the can candidature of uh, Peter Obi June 2022 uh, because I felt he was uh, the right person to govern the country considering where we are now. You know, as a nation, we needed a frugal person that would would not be would be careful in how they manage how he manages our state resources. So, uh, even though I was a member of the PDP, then as you remember, but I just followed my heart and I felt it was the right thing to do, and I still believe it's the right thing to do. But of course, I you expect what will follow. I came back to the state and I worked for the for the Labour Party, and um, I think from then it just became obvious that someday I have to join the Labour Party, mm. and that's what played that eventually. Well, I'm sure you're familiar with the narrative of party ideology and um, how easy it is for politicians in Nigeria to, to change political parties. So I'm wondering how you in, uh, answer the question of party loyalty for those who said you left the PDP once it was obvious that the governor wasn't, supposed, I mean, wasn't going to support your ambition. Well, yes, you might be correct there. The governor, I approached him, I've said this openly a couple of times, to let him know it's not so much of uh, supporting my ambition, but it's also that, I mean, of course, he has the right to support anybody. But he's the, party of, he's the leader of the party in the state. And he knew where I was at that time, you know, that I was, I was leaning towards labor. So it was a difficult decision to make. Uh, I didn't even have to go back to him to say I was leaving labor. Nice. Let's um, so, yeah, yes. Let I, I talking about, about uh, ideology. Mm. I think I am more of a, a labor person, or it probably took a Peter OB to navigate me to the destination, if you know what I mean. Well, it's, it, it's interesting the way you have put it. <laughs> I haven't, haven't done eight years as you know, representative of the PDP. But you are from Urumi, right? In Asian Northeast local government area. And there's this growing advocacy for Edo Central to produce the next governor. But I've also spoken to a couple of aspirants who have a different understanding of this concept. Unlike the narrative that Edo South has had 16 years uh, the North eight years and Edo Central haven't produced governor for only about 18 months um, since 1999. They say Edo South has had four civilian governors, Central has produced two civilian governors, and Edo North has only had one. Uh, what do you make of these and how much impact will these sentiments have on, uh, on election day? Well, I am from Uboha in Eastern Southeast. Even though in the National Assembly I represented Eastern Southeast, Eastern Northeast, and Urumi is the headquarters of Eastern Northeast. So, and I grew up in Urumi. So, technically, yes, you can say I'm from Urumi, but I am from Eastern Southeast local government. Yes, I, I don't know any Eastern man that was a military administrator, but we are talking about from 2019, the fourth, sorry, 20, 1999. The Fourth Republic. That's where we are taking it from. And uh, if you are not adding military administration to it, it's very unfortunate. But I also don't even think that. Well, I am not the one adding it to it. I am just um, telling you the sentiments of uh, mm -hmm. people in the north, for instance. They must have added Professor Ambrose Ali and uh, Professor Osubo into the mix. Yeah, even if you add all that, that would just be five years and, and eight months. So, but the point I'm making, this is even unnecessary. We are all from one family, come to think about it. Children of one, one, one parent. So why are we fighting about which region and which region, you know? When you're looking for vote, you can vote for vote everywhere. 
So Edo State is one big family. I think we should forget this idea of uh, Central, North, and South. Come to Edo South, where I am right now, Beni City. I have been around the 18 local governments, you know, to talk to people. There's almost no local government I went to, except some few in the North, where you do not have a do central person serving as an executive. In the South, a do South, there is no local government area I went to to talk to the executive where there was no one single person serving in the executive that's from a do central. Those people have made Benin City. I do start their home. So when the election comes now, now, you are talking about who is from central, who is from north. It's an unnecessary discussion that I don't even think, I don't, I don't even want to get involved with. But I believe, I see the bigger picture. I need to, I will govern a state as one state. Well, you, you seem to be an advocate of zoning yourself. My question really is, what impact will these conversations have on how people in Edo will vote. Do you, do you think it is the time for Asian people as well? Well, I, yes, I, I did two terms in the House of Reps and uh, when and some people urged me to do a third term that I have done where I will win election any day, I said no, because we have been rotating it. So if I represent a constituency of two local governments and I already did eight years in my local government, I think you should go to the other local government where I, matter of fact, I grew up. And the two elections I did, it was 11, 11 words. You know, I won all the 11 words in the second local government. And like I said, I grew up there. So if it was their turn to produce the House of Rep member, by all means, let it go there. Yes, I think I advocate for zoning because it allows for the spread. I mean, don't take this away from, from, from zoning. Whenever a particular local government or a senatorial is the governor or is in the National Assembly, you tend to do a little more for that area than the other. So if it's going around like that, I can tell you, in the eight years I spent in the National Assembly, I almost did 50-50. But when I took over from my predecessor, the projects I met, they were all in the other local government. But I can tell you now, leaving the National Assembly, my projects are shared, they are very even, 50-50, you know, between both local governments. So, but that works, because you will know your area more than any area. Mm. I have lived in Edo North. I schooled in Edo North, you know, spent so many years there. I schooled in Edo South. The place I didn't really school too much is really my own place. You know, so, but with somebody from Edo South know, my, know the Edo Central more than myself? So it allows for, you know, the rotation allows for everyone to I hear produce you. somebody from their own area. Well, I guess so, we'll yeah. see. We'll definitely see how that plays out in the coming days. Let's talk about um, your new party for a bit. There seems to be fresh challenges with the Labour Party at the national level. You're, I'm sure you're following the, the story of the treasurer, uh, the treasurer who's asking your national chairman to account for 3.5 billion naira made during last election. Are you worried about this new development and its impact on the credibility of your party going into this election? Well, I think it's some of the problems that uh, a young party will go through. Even though Labour is not such a young party, it's been around. But now they are, they, are, they are one of the major opposition parties in the country. So it's just the initial problem they will have. And by nature of Labour, you know, everybody can speak up. Who is a treasurer in APC, I mean, NWC. Have you heard the treasurer speak in APC? I was in the PDP and I was a member of NEC. If I even know the treasurer, I don't think I ever engaged or I ever saw the treasurer talking on television. So I think it's by the nature of labor. That is why you see a treasurer come out to say extra amount of money. These are matters that are usually discussed in-house. I heard I also say the chairman takes decision before telling NWC later. That's what happens everywhere. In the last APC, and when the new N NWC emerged under Blaya Adamu, Senator Blaya Adamu, they actually gave all the power, as in, what's the word now? You know, they, they conveyed and, and gave all the powers to the chairman of NWC and the secretary. Mm. 
so that they can make decision on behalf of NWC. So if INEC is requesting for an information today, the chairman should convene NWC to tell them. Like I said, I was a member of NEC in PDP. NWC will take decisions and they just send it to, to NEC to ratify. All members of NWC are not in the same place at the same time. So to say that uh, because the chairman makes certain decisions and goes to INEC with it and tells them later is an offense. Like I said, check the PDP, check the APC. Who is a treasurer to come on television and be leveling all manner of allegations against the national well, chairman? Talking come about on. talking about the treasurer, you know, sometimes they say it's not about the messenger; it, it's the message. She also accused the chairman of allegedly being in alliance with the People's Democratic Party in a Edo State. I recall that a few weeks ago, some members of your party protested against the same chairman uh, over a legation of um, supporting some aspirants ahead of the primary. The they categorically ask that Abure should stay away from the primary. Uh, uh, what, what do you make of this development? Well, you hear this a whole lot of time. In, in, you hear this. It happens in all political parties. But I think it's just leadership. If you have strong leadership, matters like this are usually handled. I also think some, some aspirants that have spent so much money and don't, are not sure what will happen are just nervous. They're the ones organizing or orchestrating all this. But it's not a problem. We're going to have a peaceful primary and a winner will emerge and we will win the governorship of Edo State. Simple. Are, are you saying that if you do not emerge winner, you will stay with the Labour Party and support whoever the party um, chooses as candidate? I would do that. I mean, I am not uh, a career politician. I have addresses, two addresses. So why will I want to break my head? Like I just mentioned, I think some people already broke the bank. And that is why they are nervous now. They have spent so much and they are suspected in their shadows. So if I, you go in with the mind of saving the people, hmm. why do you have to break the bank? Because someday all you are telling us, when you win, you have to take state resources to pay back. Are you saying that, that um, you haven't spent some money yourself, Honorable Ogo? I have spent money, but I have not broken the bank. All right. So, uh, well, I understand you. But, you know, some would say it also matters how much is in the bank. Maybe how much you have spent is relative to how much is in the bank. But I'm just kidding. So let's talk about the potential that the Labour Party really has ahead of this election. Um, your party had an overwhelming win in there during the last presidential election, uh, winning with more than twice the votes of the APC. And I think um, four times what PDP had in that election. But Peter Obi isn't on the ballot this time, right? And that's been evident in the elections we've seen after that one. How, what's your, what confidence do you have in the Labour Party? What is your party counting on this time? Well, in the uh, last election in the Edo State that the Labour Party won, it was not really the Labour Party members alone that voted for the Labour Party. And I keep telling everybody that cares to listen. At that time, I was a sitting House of Rep member under the platform of the PDP. And I said on national platform, even on your television station, that I am obedient and I was going to vote for Peter Obi. I didn't hide it. I went to my constituency and I worked for Peter Obi. People, my followers, voted for Peter Obi, and that happened across. So if you remember, the legacy PDP had issues with the governor then, and 90% of the legacy PDP vote went to Labour. So in this election again, Labour alone cannot win, but with the sympathy of the other party, the other political parties, Labour will win again. Times are hard all over the country. And funny enough, the present governor just broke the ties. You have um, PDP, APC finished 12 years, and then the PDP will be finishing 12 years in November. So I do say that have seen both sides. They have seen both political parties. So they don't think we are where we should be. So that's the opportunity Labour will have. And I strongly believe when I emerge as the candidate of Labour Party, we will win the election. Because I have friends across party. Party lines. I have a lot of friends in PDP, being a member of the legacy PDP, and I have a lot of friends in PDP, a APC. That's how I used to win elections in my constituency. Because mm -hmm. PD, 
PDP members will vote for me, and even the opposition, then APC, my constituency, won't vote for me. So it's the same thing I will replicate across the state. So you've been lawmaker twice, and you know you have the option of running a third time, but you want to be governor. Let's talk about what you're offering the Edo people. So the state ranks fifth in, in the states with the highest increase in debt between 2015 and 2022, and we saw the debt profile jump from 79 billion to 220 billion. How do you intend to fund your own developmental agenda without further plunging the state into more debt? Well, it's very simple. Uh, my, my program would be very simple. I have said from day one, from when I'm sworn in as a governor in November, I will make sure the local government councils get their money. So, so to speak, I will grant them full autonomy. Like you rightly mentioned, I was in National Assembly two times, and we had constitutional review committee. We worked and gave powers to the local government to have full autonomy, but the governors will not allow them. I will not wait for the constitution to do that. What is the autonomy to the local government councils? Whatever money that is due them from the federal, they will get. 10% of the internally generated revenue from the state, I will give them. Any local government that I think have a comparative advantage over others, I will give them money to develop their full potentials. Talking about borrowing money, I am not going for any big ticket item right now, no big projects. Fix our roads. Make sure there are functioning primary health care centers. At least one functioning primary health care center in every political world. We have two, three in most political worlds. At least make sure one is fully equipped with a medical doctor and nurses and an ambulance. Then make sure we have free education. Maybe to the university level, I will qualify the university level. Those that have high grades, high GPA, maybe 4.5, maybe 4.2. We can take it from there. We will give a boss ritual. So in that way, that woman that is flying in Akara by the roadside, the husband is a vulcanizer or a gate man. Their children can go to the university if they are intelligent. And the schools, we will make sure we staff the schools. Schools don't have enough teachers in Edo State. I have a foundation. I give out notebooks. I enroll NECO examination for students. So I'm very familiar with the school system. My foundation was paying teachers to teach in the secondary schools. So we will have enough teachers. You ask me, how are you going to do this? We will pay hardship allowance to nurses, to doctors, to teachers that will go to rural areas to teach or to work. That right. happens in the oil and gas industry. Honorable, we have to so go I now. To but I just want Can you I to quickly... Can I just add a little thing? Okay, please do. The money will come from SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. They have 17 goals, as you are aware. I will, I will implement goal 1 to 6. No poverty, zero hunger, quality education, uh, health care, quality education, gender uh, equality, six, clean water, and, um, and um, clean water. If you do this and implement, use the state budget to implement these goals, SDG will meet you midway, and they will give you grants. So no more borrowing. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Perhaps um, we'll find time to talk about um, insecurity challenges in the state subsequently to time member of the House of Representatives and governorship aspirant in uh, the Edo governorship election, Honorable Sergio Sogun. Uh, glad to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. That's our show today, everyone. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunsoye.